Recently, I received a note from one Michael Burden, who's a teacher at St Clair's College at Waverley in Sydney's eastern suburbs. Michael wrote to tell me about a project being undertaken by some of the school's students. It's called The Lost Diggers of Fromelle. The students, with the support of the author Patrick Lindsay, Graham and I both know him, he's a good fellow, are making a documentary on the Battle of Fromelle with a specific focus on the impact the battle had on the women left behind. Now, Fromelle was the first major battle fought by Australian troops on the Western Front during World War I. It lasted just 12 hours. Yet in that time, the Australians suffered more than 5,500 casualties. Nearly 2,000 were killed. And the dead were left where they fell. The British commanders refused to allow the Australians to recover the bodies of their mates. In fact, 23 Australians were killed trying to do just that. So the bodies remained there in a mass grave for more than 90 years until a man called Lambus Engelsos entered the picture. More on him in a moment. But to find out more about all of this, the documentary, or to make a donation, and that's what I want you to do, go to australianculturalfund.org.au, look for the search button on the right-hand side and put in the Lost Diggers of Fromel. Lily Whittaker is one of the St Clair's college students involved in the project. I just love these stories we do of young people doing us proud and respecting our history. So let's hear more. This is Lily right here. Good morning. Oh, well, good morning. Good evening. <laughs> She's got, got me a bit nervous. Hey, tell us, uh, take us through the history of your involvement in this documentary. Well, originally it just started off as a Year 9 history project and none of the girls had any idea of the Battle of Fromel before. So after learning more about that, we learnt how this battle really was so poorly planned and never really should have gone ahead. Yeah, we learnt more about So that. you did all this research into the mass grave and what did you know when you started and what did you find out? Well, we found out that the Australian soldiers were ordered to um, charge across 400 metres of flat land, also known as no man's land, to, towards the German soldiers where they were on slightly elevated land, giving them a greater advantage point and how the German soldiers had been settling in for two years and the Australian soldiers had only been there for a few days, which didn't give them much of an advantage either. So, Graham, what's happened here as these students... How old are you, Lily? I'm 15. 15. And you created profiles, as I understand it, of all these soldiers based just on their names. Yes, that's true. How many profiles? I think there was around 10 or so because we did them in groups at school. But you profiled a man called Ernest Gench. Tell us about him. Ernest Augustus Gench is an only child. He's named after his father, Ernest Felix Gench, and his mother is Alice Elizabeth Gench. He was 21 years of age when he enlisted. He was from the Petersham area, and we learnt that he also was a lover of motorcycles, and that was his passion. Lover of motorcycles. <laughs> now, as part of the research, I understand you met his grandchildren and great-granddaughter. Yes, that's true. So what sort of experience was that? It was a really great and memorable experience because I got to see how the impact of this war is still impacting many families today and they were very appreciative of the video profile I made on Ernest and how Ernie's legacy will be remembered forever. Yeah, well, you brought him back to life in that sense, didn't you? Yeah, they, all of them, yeah. all of them. Now, you'll love this because, speaking of grandchildren, you got to meet the granddaughter of this bloke called Herbert Nutsy Bolt. Don't you love that the nickname's Nutsy? Herbert Nutsy yeah, Bolt. Imagine the Aussies call and, Yeah, and he was a Newtown Rugby League player. That's true. And he was killed at From Hill. He was, yes. Tell us about him. We um, got to meet his granddaughter, Josie Shelley, at a workshop we had last year. She delivered a really emotional speech about her loss from her grandfather not knowing where he was for all these years. And all of us were nearly in tears by the end because it was very emotional and it was very heartfelt as well. And actually, which you'd like to know, is after our radio interview on Monday, her son, Stephen Shelley, um, called up Patrick Lindsay and decided generously that he will donate the rest of the money that we can't make up for the documentary as well. Isn't that lovely? Yeah. Isn't that beautiful? Just come on, I want to come back to this business because when you met with Herbert's granddaughter, that took place, didn't it, at a workshop run by the person I mentioned earlier, yeah. the amateur historian and the former teacher, Lambus Engelsos. Now, I remember speaking to Lambus about his amazing work way back in 2010 
Tell us a bit about him from your perspective. Um, Lambus is an expert on the whole battle of Fromel. He, he explained it to all of us in such great detail. He told us about the steps he went through to discover these missing soldiers at Pheasant Wood and the, in the mass graves and the steps he went through to identifying these soldiers using DNA and contacting relatives. And he enabled us to step into the shoes of these families left behind, as well as these soldiers, and, underst and understand the experience they went through in this mm. battle. I know. Now, Patrick Lindsay decided to make this documentary, and he's an author, he's a broadcaster, he, he's, he's made... Well known, yeah, yeah, he's very well known, done a lot of stuff, but he spoke to you because what you're wanting to do and what he wanted to do is to see Fromel through the eyes of the women. <laughs> That's true, yeah. And, and, and what did you see through the eyes of those women? We wanted to we want to show that um, these women left behind had to, like while they were grieving as well, the loss of their husbands, brothers and um, sons, how they was trying to pick up their family to keep going. And we also gathered a lot of information on letters that these um, women sent to their the soldiers, not knowing where they were, asking how they were going and stuff like that. And we think that'll be a really heartfelt way and powerful way to show it. This whole thing's is beautiful. pretty powerful. I'm not sure if you realise how powerful it is. Well, that's, I was just about to make that point, Graham. You see, I understand that you sort of sort the profiles and compose the profiles having read the letters that these women wrote to their loved ones in the battlefields. And you actually, as I understand it, the girls read these out loud to one another, the letters. How hard is it to read that kind of letter, you at your age, 15, going all that way back, and this is the kind of thing that a woman at home is saying to a loved one whom she may never see again. It's, it's just so... It was really, like, difficult as well because it was such an emotional... Like, these letters were very emotional, very, like, um, personal as well. They were curious about their, their loved ones, and it was just really hard to read as these soldiers and their loved ones were never even receiving it. So what's happening now? We're, how far down the track are you? This is the documentary of basically the women, from a perspective of the women at Frommel. How far down the track are you? Well, we have... Um, at the moment now, we've reached um, our target point for the, f the fundraising and the donations. And now we're sort of um, preparing what we're going to do to make it happen, like the preparations for the documentary, like who's going to be in charge of media and the, how we're going to distribute that. And we've also... Um, been organising. All, it's all being done by school, should you run the There's anything we can do, just... <laughs> no, but... no I, I, this, this is fabulous. I might say something, by the way, you're the most impressive 15-year-old girl I've ever met. Thank you very much. It's quite extraordinary. Beautiful, isn't it? So all the money you've raised is going to the documentary. Yes. And that you... Uh, you're, just explain to our viewers where you are going, though. Oh, sure. Um, well, next year in April... Part, um, a few schoolgirls, well, actually, a lot of schoolgirls are going on an immersion trip to Italy and France. And then the girls, part of the Fromel project, are taking an extra week off and going to Fromel to shoot the documentary. Mm. And we will also be there for Anzac Day as well. There for, isn't that lovely for Anzac Day? And on all of that, your teacher, how many teachers are going with you? Um, at the moment, it's definitely two. Right. And definitely. how many girls? How many girls? It should be five or six. And you're all, you're all paying your own way? Yes. There's mum and dad over here and all the family have come, very into the proud. Studio, come into the studio, <laughs> very right proud. So. Okay. And you've had some good support, I understand, from the RSL. Yes, we have. We've, um, the RSL clubs that have been on board are Campsie, Club Rivers at Riverwood, Kingsgrove, Earl, Earlwood slash Bardwell Park, South Hurstville, North Bondi and Bono Junction Waverley. They've all helped yeah. us get it started. Yeah, the impressive point there, Graham, is that this young lady remembered all of them. <laughs> yeah, I, know. Eh? I wouldn't be able to get past the first two. <laughs> <laughs> eh? And uh, tell us why people should, in the wider world, like other kids at school, teachers, the curriculum, why should we... There's, there's a lot of talk this week about revising the curriculum and they keep calling it going back to basics. And there's a real concern, I think, for people like mum and dad when they go to school that we don't know enough about our Australian history and the Australian involvement. And you're talking about the enrol of women in war. We tend to think that it's just a men thing. But women at home made enormous sacrifices yeah. and did tremendous work on the ground. Um, are we doing enough about this in schools? Um, no, I don't think so. I think we need to... Because um, mostly in history lessons, we're just reading off a piece of paper and we just see, for example, like 2,000 killed in the Battle of Fromel, mm. but this way we're learning... We learn about these soldiers individually and we're learning...
that it wasn't just it's not just a number these are actual individual people not much older than us girls yeah. that are studying yeah, it right. and it makes it um, more real but I mean, we're a country of only five million people yeah so it must have I think I learnt that in World War One one out of four families mm. um, lost a loved one and I think are you able at 15 to transpose all of that today and think well what would be the reaction of the Australian people today if that kind of personal devastation overtook the nation? It would be devastating. It would be absolutely devastating because there'd be so many, so many families, so many loved ones, just people you know. It's, it's just crazy. See, the difference too is there were so many country lads in the army then because it was a very different distribution of population. Mm. And so the cities weren't the only place that people lived. People lived right through the country. But if you and the Kui marches showed, yes. you know, how they could sort of all join up on the way down. But I think it's important for people watching the program here to have a look. Lily's 15. If you go to Gallipoli, as I've been to Gallipoli, and they've got thousands of headstones there at Gallipoli, and I was fascinated by the date of birth at the bottom of the headstones. Yeah. And many of these young people told lies about their age. They responded to the call and... 15 and 16 years of age. Yeah. It's hard to believe, isn't it? It is. It's a very young age. They just wanted to serve their country yeah. and like respond to the country. call. Yeah. They didn't know where I they were Brendan going. Brendan Nelson told me there was one 14-year-old yeah. died at Gallipoli. Yeah, they didn't know where they were going yeah. or what was being asked of them. So now, when is it all put together? When you've got the documentary done, what do you hope to do with it? Well, um, we're sort of trying to sort that out now, doing our outreach program, getting it out, distributing it well enough and... Um, we want to distribute it to schools and companies, and we just want we just want it to be remembered that these the sacrifice these men made, and especially the women and families left behind, are remembered as well through this documentary. You're an angel, you're an angel, <laughs> isn't she, a dear little thing? That's Lily Whitaker, and what wonderful work from St Clair's College at Waverley in Sydney. And when the documentary is complete, you'll be back on TV here, and we'll be able to Absolutely. talk about it and show aspects of it. We're very proud. Look at. It's, it's, it's quite... It's inspirational, actually, for older people like us to know that there is a generation here, like these young people, who do respect the sacrifices and the history of their country. So we're grateful for that. Thank you for talking and sharing. Thank you very much Thank for you. having me. <laughs> Isn't she sweet? It's a great pleasure, actually. I've really enjoyed it. I agree. Thank you. I don't enjoy sitting next to him most of the time, but this <laughs> has been a good, a good part of the evening. Yes, I nice. needed one. I need someone who's respectful, Lily, and I'm grateful <laughs> for that. <laughs> there she is. Her name is Lily... Whitaker.